Okay, hi. So um, this is another uh, video for Mercedes W220 uh, model, and basically in this video, I'm just going to show you um, how I'm fixing this instrument cluster. Uh, this is an instrument cluster from a Mercedes S-Class S320 W220 model, and the issue here is that um, the speed dial. Uh, disappears. Basically these instrument clusters have got three fluorescent tubes um, which are powered by I believe three stepping transformers uh, which basically increment the voltage uh, in stages and uh, one of the transformers uh, often goes and that's basically what I'll be replacing on this um, and I'll be purchasing the kit from eBay to um, fix this instrument cluster. So I've already opened this instrument cluster and I've just put all the parts back in very loosely just to um, so I can quickly open things and, and make a short video on uh, how you can uh, open this instrument cluster. So to start with basically I've put it on, um, on a soft cloth so the front doesn't get damaged and uh, basically what we're looking at here, I'm just going to pause the video Okay, so I've just turned the instrument cluster around and basically what we're looking at here is, uh, this is the back uh, side for the instrument cluster and um, the very first thing we need to replace is, so disconnect is this uh, connector which basically sits inside here and this is for the uh, speaker which is connected at the back of the instrument cluster and if you look here you can probably see the um, the round um, edges where the uh, speaker is right, on the inside. So when you disconnect this, um, basically the speaker gets disconnected with the back panel. Uh, the, th the other thing I want to point out is if if you have an issue where only a um, few of the uh, side bulbs are not working, such as you know the parking light, etc. So for those type of issues, you don't have to open the entire instrument cluster. You can just replace these bulbs from here. They just you just twist these and the bulbs come out and you replace and put the new ones in, uh, and that's the same for the indicators as well. These bulbs up here, uh, therefore the indicators. You don't need to open the instru actual instrument cluster for that. If the bulb goes and you can hear the relay kicking in, it's best to just um, replace these bulbs rather than uh, opening the whole unit. Okay, so once you've disconnected the um, uh, the uh, connector here for the speaker. You need to dis you need to remove um, a lot of the screws on the back, and for that you need uh, one of these screwdrivers, and this is a T10, uh, which I've used, and um, and it's the T10 that will allow you to open these uh, instrument clusters. Sorry, the screws. Um, it's the same one for the inside as well. So if you have one of these, you can pretty much do most of the task. Uh, in terms of opening the, um, the screws. Okay, once you open the screws, gently uh, pry on these uh, tabs at the top, and uh, um, you've got them all around. So you have to lift the the, um, the tabs and then push the clasp the the back uh, panel back. Uh, just be very careful because a lot of these models are now old, and uh, if you're not careful, if you apply too much force, these this plastic will crack. So, um, and to make the job easier, if you feel that it's not op it's not releasing the the catch easily, then maybe use a uh, hair dryer uh, with the gentle heat on the on the edges and lift it up and gently open the back um, panel. Okay, so once you've uh, undone all the uh, the um, uh, connectors on the side um, and uh, you've disconnected that, you basically just lift this up. Like I said, I've already opened this, so um, uh, just uh, for basically for this video. Um, so once you open uh, at the back, um, this is where you want to now start disconnecting these uh, connectors. And uh, if I just go back a little bit, basically you have these connectors that you need to disconnect. You've got one, two, uh, you've got third one there, and four, ten, fifth. Now, what you'll notice on each side of the cable, uh, the ribbon cable, you have one side which has got these black uh, bits, and the ones that don't have the black bit, you need to connect. You need to disconnect them on the other end. So, for example, if you look here, you can see there's no black, and and it's actually on the other side. So it's the other side that you need to disconnect, not this side. Um, and it's very simple. Um, basically, the black. Um, 
plastic piece on the side basically hooks onto the clamp and uh, just holds it gently. It doesn't actually lock it or anything, you just still push it back and it will come out. Don't apply too much force but just make sure that you are releasing the ones with the black uh, sides, not the other end. Okay, once you've removed the cable, so um, yeah, this one is disconnecting, so I'll try to disconnect it in front of you. Yeah, so you can see it's, 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 it, you don't have to apply too much force. So disconnect those. Once you've disconnected them, uh, you can actually start taking the back panel out. But actually, so, sorry, just before we do that, you need to also um, take this whole unit out. So I'm just going to pause the video, take the, the unit out, and I'll resume the video. Okay, so what I've done is basically I've just pulled this whole unit out of the, the front housing. Uh, there were no screws, no um, other uh, plastic bits that hold on to it. It just literally, you have to lift it up gently up from all sides and it just comes out uh, without any effort. So um, it's very easy. Once that's done, um, basically uh, we need to just, the transformers that I'm talking about, um, the ones that actually do go faulty, uh, you're looking at um, this one here. Uh, then you've got a small one there and another one of these actually sits on the back PCB and it's that one that actually goes faulty the most um, then followed by this one and then this one and if let's say all three are good chances are the fluorescent tubes are um, uh, have reached their end of life and you need to replace those and uh, they are very difficult to get hold of but in many cases I found that it's just the transformers that need changing uh, once you replace the transformers um, it actually fixes the issue so the one that we need to replace is not on this PCB but it's on the PCB at the back you can actually see the edges of it is it's there uh, same color as this one uh, I believe it's four pin uh, instead of eight pin like this one and the idea is that it actually increases the voltage uh, step by step so this transformer increases the voltage to this one and this one increases voltage to the one at the back um, that's as far as I've understood now it's possible that information might be the other way around but that's my understanding and I believe it goes all the way up to something like 20,000 volts to power the uh, fluorescent tubes to fire the the gases inside okay so once that's done um, I have dismantled some other things at the uh, at the front as well, um, which I think I'll include at this time. Yeah. So if I flip this, basically what you, what I've done is you have to dismantle, you have to disconnect the um, the needles. You don't need to disconnect this needle just yet. I'll I'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, so actually, let's just turn this around. Let's make a bit more sense. He's right. So you don't need to take this needle out, but you can actually pull these needles out. Um, and what I would suggest is that if you take a piece of pay, uh, piece of cardboard uh, and then pry the needle from underneath, just gently un and, and just rotate it so you apply even force on on all sides, the needles will get disconnected quite easily. The bit that I want to mention here is that the needle is constructed in two parts. Um, there's the needle. Um, the black housing is a separate part and this orange bit is part of like a, um, a glass prism, um, sorry, but you can say plastic prism and that basically allows the light to go through from here and illuminates this needle part. So if you pry the needle uh, from the sides you, there's a good chance that you're going to end up breaking the, uh, the middle part from the black part so it's best to actually pry it f as far uh, on the inside as possible and be as gentle as possible otherwise you will end up with two pieces um, of this needle and then you'll have to glue them together and it'll create extra work so just be gentle on releasing this um, needle once you've done that what I want to point out is you don't need to release um, uh, you don't need to remove these you can leave them in and you also don't need to remove this part. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a minute. And this needle will need to be removed, but uh, I'll explain that in just a minute. So the next thing is, at this point, you want to disconnect. You want to remove all the uh, screws um, from this PCB. And what I did was, um, 
on this PCB there are two types of screws, uh, two lengths of screws and what I've done is the ones that were longer I wrote an L next to them and the ones that were shorter I wrote an S so I know that this is where the short screws go and this is where the long ones go most of them have been removed already I just put um, two in just so that I could put the components back in to make this video I'm just going to pause this video and remove these screws and dismantle the back part and I'll continue the rest Okay, so I've removed the screws from the back PCB but even at this point we can't lift the PCB out because if you remember the front needle actually connects to this it's a servo part, part of a, I think a stepper motor and uh, it checks the number of steps and I think it has got an end where actually you reposition it back to zero so that needle is connected to this, this unit here um, and because of that we can't lift the PCB up until we remove that needle and to remove that needle what we need to do is if you look here there's two screws which I've already removed once you remove these two so I'm going to turn this around okay so I've turned this around and remember we've already disconnected these cables all you have to do is slide this downwards okay um, just be very careful because the needle is sitting right on top of it so once you've done that, uh, the needle is now accessible. Okay, so this unit comes out and it comes downwards. Now remember, you don't need to um, take this out because when I first, when I was first opening this, I thought maybe this needs to come out before I can slide that. And so I just kept, I just studied, studied it, the um, instrument, cl instrument cluster longer, and I realized that this doesn't need to come out. Uh, this can remain where it is, so you just need to slide the middle part downwards after taking these two screws from the other side. Okay, so at this point we need to disconnect the, um, the, the needle. Now to disconnect the needle, we need to go back, flip the, uh, the um, instrument cluster again, because I'll show you something that needs to be done first. So very gently, make sure you have a soft uh, surface so the needle is not getting damaged. What you need to do is you need to... Uh, where did it go? There. Right, you have to push this unit down. So let me just get my screwdriver to so I can point to this. Um, I'm talking about these. So it's these two. You push them out a little bit and then push them down. And I'll, and I'll show you what that does. So you just push it down sideways and then push it in. That's it, you see it's gone in. Now if I flip it to the other side, basically what this is doing, this is the connector for the LED which sits inside here and that gets powered by this ribbon and so this plastic bit is basically a connector so now that we've pushed it down you can see there's two uh, metal pins in, inside it and it's those pins that connect here so now we can basically pry the, need, uh, the needle up gently and once we've done that we, are, we can remove the other side so I'm just going to pause the video again Okay, so I've now removed the uh, the needle, and the needle basically can now be stored away until we finish the job. Uh, like I said, at this point, you don't need to open anything uh, further on this side. Uh, all the work has to be done on the other side, and I'll explain that because I was very tempted to actually open all this, and it, you don't need to do that. Um, the job is uh, very different; it needs to be done from the other side. So. Here we go. Um, so at this point, the back panel, the PCB, provided that you've disconnected these uh, connectors on all, all around, you can just lift it up. And there you go. You can see that the, uh, the PCB is now out of the way. Now the PCB that we were trying to reach is this one. And in the transformer that we need to replace is this one here. Now to, in order to replace this transformer, you need to take this PCB out. Now for this PCB to be removed, you have to actually desolder these points. And the reason you need to do that is because the fluorescent tubes, um, there's three of them, are sitting just right behind this. And they are visible if you, if you um, were to look at from the front. Um, but they're actually soldered from the back, which means you need to remove these, two, these solders in order to... Um, lift this PCB up, desold the transformer, put the new one back in, put the whole unit back in and, and that should fix it. Um, so the, the points that you need to desolder uh, is these two um, that you can see here. Um, yeah, These two and there's one just at the back here. 
and that's because the uh, the fluorescent tube on this side is an L shape which goes like this okay and then the other fluorescent tube from this one goes round and it comes down here to this point and then the last tube basically connects from here goes all the way around up to this soldering point so once you've desoldered those hopefully uh, this will come off uh, the other thing you need to do is you do need to release the, um, these metal bits and that's basically holding the front uh, um, you know LCDs for um, the temperature and um, the onboard temperature uh, sensor in the um, in the bumper and the time so for it's basically a, a metal piece that holds those two LCDs in place so um, but you don't need to take it off you just need to pry it a little bit and this will come off um, on this side so what I'm going to do is next thing is I'm just going to desolder um, these points try to take the PCB out uh, PCB out and I'll make further notes on this so this is how you dismantle the instrument cluster to get to the um, to this transformer here so you can replace and fix the um, the illumination issue okay so I hope uh, this uh, video was uh, useful to um, fix your instrument cluster thank you for watching